Hi, welcome back Tigers. Today we're going to be talking about the substitution method. And the reason why I use the substitution method is when I have these two equations and I want to know where the point of intersection is. That is, where will these two equations cross one another? Now, the best way to describe the substitution method is think about your favorite restaurant. And let's pretend you went to your favorite restaurant and you ordered some chicken fingers. And when they brought you the chicken fingers, they give you a little side of barbecue sauce. And you said to yourself, hey, I really don't want barbecue sauce. I want some ranch dressing. So you ask the waiter or waitress to switch out or to substitute the barbecue sauce for ranch dressing. Well, we're going to do the same thing with these two equations. We're going to switch something out and replace it with something else. So, as I look, I've got x plus y equals 12. And then my second equation is 4x plus 2 equals y. Now, on my second equation, I see that y is all by itself. And so what I need to say to myself is, what does y equal in this equation? Well, y equals 4x plus 2. So I'm going to put parentheses around that because that represents what y equals. Now, on my first equation, I'm going to put parentheses around y. And going back to my restaurant example, I'm going to take out the barbecue sauce and replace it with the ranch dressing. So, if I rewrite this equation, x stays the same. It does not change. It's just like those chicken fingers. They're still just chicken fingers. Now, I'm going to take out the y and replace it with 4x plus 2. Just so I don't get confused, I'm going to write this in red so you all can see that I've just switched it out with y. Now, the first equation ends with 12, so I'm just going to write 12. Now, this is my new equation. What I need to do now is combine like terms. I need to add all of my x's together. So x plus 4x is 5x. The 2 doesn't change, and equals 12. That doesn't change either. Now, I look at this and I say to myself, I've got 5x, but what's after the 5x? I've got positive 2. So what I need to do is subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Whatever I do to the uh, left side of the equals, I need to do the same to the right side. So now I'm left with this, 5x is equal to 12 take away 2 is 10. Now, I've got a number in front of x, and that number is 5. And I need to divide this equation by 5, this side of the equation, and that side of the equation by 5. Those cancel out. 10 divided by 5 is just 2. Now, what I need to do, keep in mind, we're trying to find the point of intersection. So I've solved for x. Now I need to solve for y. I need to know what the coordinate is those two lines will intersect. So I say to myself, which equation looks easier to work with when I substitute? If x equals 2, I could use this first equation, and instead of x, I just replace it with 2. Or I could use this second equation, and instead of x, I would replace it with 2. So this would say 4 times 2. Now, it doesn't matter which equation that you use. Just use the equation that you feel more comfortable using. So I'm going to use the first equation. So if I use the first equation instead of x, I'm going to replace it with 2. So I say to myself, 2 plus what equals 12? 2 plus what equals 12? Well, 2 plus 10 equals 12. So y equals 10. And if I write this as a coordinate pair, what I need to do is write my x value first and my y value second. If you ever forget what order your coordinate pair needs to go in, just think about the alphabet. What letter comes first? x. What letter comes after x? y. So uh, when you list your coordinate pairs, just put x first and then put y second. So hopefully that helps you as you start graphing equations. And if you need to use the uh, substitution method, hopefully this helped you. 
Hi, welcome back Tigers. In today's video clip, we're talking about the uh, substitution method. Now, it's when we have two equations, we're trying to find the point of intersection. We want to know where these two equations will cross and what those two coordinates will be. Well, I've got these two equations behind me. 3x plus 2y equals 8. And then this other equation that says y is equal to 2x minus 3. Now, in the last video clip, I was talking about how with the substitution method, it's like you're at your favorite restaurant and you have ordered some food and they have decided to replace, let's say, barbecue sauce with ranch dressing. So all they do is take something away and they replace it with something else. Well, here's what we're going to do with this problem. I'm going to put parentheses around 2x minus 3 because that's what y equals. And I'm going to put parentheses around the y in the first equation. Now, what I'm going to do is just have it switch places. I'm going to take this y out and replace with everything that I see here. It's just like the barbecue sauce going away and the ranch dressing coming to you. So, I'm going to rewrite this equation, 3x plus 2. Now, after the 2, I'm going to write everything that I put parentheses around. All of this in red represented what y equaled. y equaled 2x minus 3. So instead of y, I just take it out, take out the y, and replace it with 2x minus 3. I'm going to finish off the rest of the equation equals 8, just like I did in this original one. Now, as I start going through this, I notice that this 2 is in front of the parenthesis. And so since this 2 is in front of the parenthesis, I have to do something called the distributive property. So I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to multiply it with all of the numbers inside the parentheses. So, 2 times 2x is 4x, but I also have to distribute with this other value. So, 2 times a negative 3. 2 times a negative 3 is negative 6, and now I'm all done distributing. The 2 just distributes throughout the parentheses. Now, I look at my equation. This is what I have right now. I've got 3x plus 4x minus 6 equals 8. What I need to do now is combine like terms. So I'm going to combine 3x plus 4x. So 3 plus 4 is 7x minus 6 is equal to 8. I want to isolate the variable. I want to get the variable all by itself and after the 7x I've got a negative 6. So what I need to do is add 6 to both sides of the equation. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side to balance it out. So I'm left with this, 7x. These 6's cancel out, negative 6 plus 6. It's like I had $6 and I lost $6. So I end up with no dollars, basically. So 6 take away 6 is just 0. 8 plus 6 is 14. Now I say to myself, gee, what is in front of that variable? What is in front of x? And the 7 is in front of x. So I'm going to divide this by 7, divide that by 7 as well. 7 divided by 7 just cancels out. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So my answer is x equals 2. But keep in mind, when we do this process, we are trying to find the point of intersection. We're trying to figure out where those two lines will cross. So what I need to do now is take my answer, x equals 2, and substitute it back into one of these equations. Now, which equation looks easier to work with? Is it this top equation or is it the bottom equation? When I start to substitute this answer in, I need to say to myself, gee, which one will I have an easier time trying to calculate? I'm going to select the second equation. Why? Because the numbers are a little bit smaller and I'm only dealing with just really itty bitty numbers. So instead of x, I'm going to replace it with 2. So it's 2 times 2. 
2 times 2 is 4. 4 take away 3 is 1. So y is equal to 1. Now, if I wanted to use this first equation up here, I could. Uh, and so what I would do is replace this x with a 2. 3 times 2 would have been 6. 6 plus 2y equals 8. There's a little bit, a little bit more steps to do with that first equation. Um, and so, therefore, that's why I use this second equation. But you can always check your work by substituting it into the first equation and seeing if you get the same answer. Now, when I list my coordinates, all I have to do is think of the alphabet. What letter comes first in the alphabet, X or Y? X comes first, Y comes second. So hopefully that helps you with the substitution process. Keep in mind, what we're trying to do here is find the point of intersection. We're trying to figure out where those two lines will intersect. Hi, welcome back everyone. In this video clip, we're going to be talking about the substitution method like we have in previous clips. However, with this example, we've got a fraction here. And I'm going to show you what I do when I see one fraction. And it works if there's only one fraction. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Keep in mind, when we're doing the substitution process, we're trying to figure out where these two equations will cross if we graph them and what that coordinate would be. Now, what I need to do here is just replace one of my variables with what I want to substitute. And in the previous video clips, I've talked about how, you know, think about your favorite restaurant. And you've gone to that favorite restaurant and you sat down and you ordered some chicken fingers. And the waiter or waitress brought over the chicken fingers and they had a little thing of barbecue sauce. And you didn't want the barbecue sauce. You wanted to substitute it with ranch dressing. Well, this process is kind of like ranch dressing and barbecue sauce, and I'll show you what I mean. Here's what we're going to do. I've got 1 half x plus y equals 30. My second equation is y is equal to 4x plus 3. Now, in my second equation, y equals 4x plus 3. So what I'm going to do is put parentheses around that because that's what everything y represents. And now I'm going to go back to my first equation and put parentheses around y. Now, going back to my restaurant example, this is kind of like the ranch dressing, and this is like the barbecue sauce. I didn't want barbecue sauce. I wanted to replace it with all of this, with the ranch dressing. So watch what happens when I rewrite this. When I rewrite this, I'm going to have 1 half x plus, now just so we don't get confused, I'm going to take the y out and replace it with 4x plus 3. All of that represented y. I took y out of the equation and replaced it with what it is now. Now, equals 30. Don't forget the equals 30 part because that's still part of the first equation. Now I've got this one fraction and I can do a variety of things with this one fraction but there's something that I do often and it works if there's one fraction and if you like this method feel free to use it. If you know a different way to work with fractions use that method as well. Here's what I'm going to do. The denominator is 2 I'm going to take the denominator and distribute with everything in the equation. Don't forget the right side of the equals. Any numbers on the right side of the equals also needs to be multiplied by the denominator. Now watch what happens. I'm left with this, 1x. What's 2 times 4x? 8x. 2 times 3 is 6. And don't forget this last part, 2 times 30 is 60. And guess what? The fraction disappeared. I basically used the denominator against itself, and now there's no fraction. So now what I need to do is combine like terms. I see this has an x and that has an x, so those can be combined. 
So 1x plus 8x is 9x plus 6 is equal to 60. What I need to do is isolate the variable. I want to get x all by itself. And I can't get x all by itself because there's a positive 6 afterwards. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. When I subtract 6 from both sides, this is what I'm left with. 9x. Positive 6, take away 6 is 0. Those cancel out. 60 take away 6 is 54. Now, I don't have x all by itself because there's a 9 in front of it. So what I need to do is divide this side by 9, divide that side by 9. 9 divided by 9 cancels out, and I'm left with this. x equals 54 divided by 9. Well, if you don't know this trick about 9s, you can always do them on your fingers until you actually memorize them. Well, 54, watch very carefully what I do here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are my 10s. These are my 1s. I'm going to put down 54. If you look, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 54. Now I have a question for you. Which finger is down? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. My sixth finger is down if I count it from 1 to 10. My sixth finger is down. This only works with nines on your fingers. So if you haven't memorized your nine times tables, or if you're having trouble dividing nines, you can always do this little trick on your fingers. Now, my answer of 54 divided by 9 ends up being 6. But keep in mind, guys, when I'm doing the substitution method, I'm trying to find the point intersection. I'm trying to figure out where those two lines will cross. I've only figured out one of those coordinates. I need to figure out the other coordinate. Now, I say to myself, which equation looks easier to work with? Is it this top equation, 1 half x plus y equals 30? Or is it the second equation, y is equal to 4x plus 3? Well, I know a lot of you don't like to work with fractions. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you want to work with the second equation. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of x, I'm going to substitute it with 6. I'm going to replace it with 6. So what's 4 times 6? 4 times 6 is 24. And then I need to add 3 more to it. So 4 times 6 is 24, plus 3 is 27. That's where those two lines will intersect. Those two lines will intersect at these coordinates. Now, in case you forgot how to list your coordinates, just think of the alphabet. X always comes first, Y always comes second. So these will cross at 627. 627, I apologize about that. That's where those two lines will cross. So hopefully this helps you as you go through the substitution process. Keep in mind, guys, the substitution process, I'm replacing something with something else. I'm taking something away and replacing it with some other variable or some other number. 